So, have you ever wondered how you can set up some toggle buttons in your game interfaces? You know the kind of custom tabs or mode switches or player settings display that you get in a lot of actual games. Hello everyone, I'm Mina, and in this quick Godot for c -sharp tutorial, we're going to discover how quick it is to add toggle buttons to your games in this engine. Okay, first of all, let's set up our scene with a couple of toggle buttons, step by step. In this tutorial, we're going to work on this basic settings panel, and more precisely, we'll make those three buttons in the middle toggle between the three available languages, English, which is the default, French or German. By the way, note that if you're curious about internationalization or localization in Godot, you should definitely check out those previous episodes from the series where I talked about this topic in details. But anyway, for now, if we try to run the game as is, you'll notice a few things. First of all, our placeholder string keys are replaced by the English translations, because this is the default language for our game. And second, the three buttons are indeed clickable, but they have a basic normal behavior, where as soon as we release or click, the button goes back to its normal state. What we want instead is for the pressed button to remain pressed, and for every press to unpress the previous button too, so that there's always only one active button in this row at the same time. To do this in Godot, it's actually pretty simple. What we need to do is the following. To begin with, we'll select our three buttons and in the inspector we'll enable the toggle mode option. Let's also make sure that our English button, which corresponds to the initial language when the game first starts, is pressed by default. We can do that with this button pressed property. So now if we try again, we see that when we click our buttons, they remain pressed until we re-click on them. But of course we can have several active at the same time, which shouldn't really happen in our case. So to avoid this, we're going to need a special button group resource to share between the three of them. In a nutshell, button groups are a way in Godot to link several buttons together, so that whenever you activate one button in the group, you also enforce that the others are disabled. So let's prepare our new button group as a new project resource first, and then we'll select our three buttons and drag our resource to the button group slot in the inspector. This way, our three language buttons are now exclusive, and we won't be able to get multiple ones pressed together. And there we go! From that point on, if we click on one of our three buttons, it becomes pressed and it stays pressed, and you see that there is only one active button at any given time. Alright, so now that our buttons are ready, let's see how to actually connect them to some logic in our c -sharp script to update the current game language when we toggle between them. So basically, the main thing to remember with Godot's buttons when in toggle mode is that instead of hooking up the pressed signal to a callback function, as we usually do with Godot buttons, this time we need to connect the toggle signal. As you can see, this signal is available for any button node, and it receives a boolean parameter directly from the engine that tells our callback function whether this button was just toggled on or off. So suppose that we give our scene's root node a new C-sharp script, and that inside we define a new function called toggle language that takes in this direct boolean parameter and an extra parameter to reference the language of the button that was just toggled. In this method, we simply have to use Godot's built-in localization system, and in particular here the translation server.setLocal method, along with our local code input parameter to switch the entire game to the right language. And then, if we go back to the editor and rebuild our project, we can select our first button, open up its toggled signal connection pop-up, and pick a function from our root node script. So you see that in here for now, we don't see a new function, cause we have our extra local string parameter that gives it a different prototype for Godot from what this toggle signal is expecting. But if we toggle off the compatible functions only filter at the bottom, then you see that our new method appears, and we can double click on it to select it. Finally, we just need to switch on the advanced mode and use the dropdown on the right to add an extra string parameter with the local code matching this button. 
Note that if you're curious, you can check out this page from the Godot docs to know what exactly should be the local code for a given language. Of course, then we should do the same thing for the two other buttons with the right local codes. So we're gonna bind them to the same toggle language function, but with the fr and de code. And actually, that's it. At that point, if we try our game again, we see that when we click on one of our three buttons, the entire interface switches to the associated language as expected. And of course, our toggle system from before makes sure that we always have just one language button active at the same time. So here you go. You now know how to easily set up toggle buttons in a good game interface thanks to the basic properties of the button node type. And for example, you can take a look at this video to learn more about how to stylize text in Godot 4. I hope you enjoyed this quick tutorial. If you did, feel free to hit the like button and subscribe to discover more. As always, thanks for watching and take care.